see the competition elevated more so. We started off with eight, and it started off today with six, and now we're just down to three. Northwood versus Oklahoma Christian winners finals. I am ready for this winner's final, Andy. I mean, this is a bit of a rematch, and last time around it felt like Oklahoma Christian were still settling in. They were still trying to get themselves on the same page, and, well, it's never easy to come into your first match and play up against uh, the reigning champs. Obviously, did not have the best of times, but now it feels like things are looking up for them, right? They're putting it together. It's been getting better and better, and now they have a chance to potentially pull off another big upset. Yeah, it sure does, right? I mean, Oklahoma Christian, again, from yesterday, I feel like a lot of uh, individuals, I mean, even myself as well, I, I'm a big Cruz fan, but I was ready to write them off as that Fisher's roster. Let me tell you, I got to tell you, though, this Oklahoma Christian squad, they were looking pretty good. The vibes were definitely high. I think that they're going to put Northwood to the test here. Yeah, well, let's take a look at Northwood and see that roster. Foul. You have to hit it. Remarkable quick scope. We're absolutely pistol with somebody. Off with the scope. Tried to go for the nose go. Good. Second chance. Okay. That's a hell of a read. That sounds gonna be hot. Gecko down low. What? Doesn't win the gun. Fight in the net on the exit. No way. Dak gets away with the 1v3. How about this roster, Andy? Bink, Infinite, Dak, Mock. I'm sure uh, names everybody is familiar with now, especially after this weekend. Yeah, I mean, through this weekend, look, again, you know, I said yesterday, if you've been living under a rock and you haven't been watching Challengers whatsoever, then, hey, maybe these names might come as a surprise to you, but I'm sorry, they absolutely shouldn't. Bink, Infinite, again, that was a duo that was on the Northwood roster just last season. Joined with the likes of Mock and Dak, two individuals that honestly hardly need any introduction whatsoever. Dak is a monster, not only from what he got the... Uh, showcase in his player intro, but also on the map as well. You get the guy uh, Vasnev in his hand. I don't care what map. I don't care what mode he's on. He's probably going to drop some numbers. Yeah, there is an ability to take over games, and well, every single member on that Northwood team has that capability. That is certainly a problem, and well, something that Oklahoma Christian are going to have to deal with. Let's take a look at their roster. Turn around. Oh, wait, he's going to get a little bit of help here, or so you thought. Splody just kind of bounces past him, and Frosty gets pulled. Oh, it's a cheeky play, and Texas State will not love watching the stream back and seeing that. I know there's only 15 seconds left here, and Oklahoma Christian just wisely backing away from the hard point, which is arguably the most money kill we have to attend to Modern Warfare 2. Oh! No, I've been talking about it all weekend, Andy, but if Cruz hey. doesn't get up after this, if they happen to win and do the Adesanya arrows on mm. every single member on Northwood, I'm going to have to go have a talk with them because that just feels like it is right for the taking when you talk about him going up against this team as well as one of his teammates. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Cruz, of course, will be playing next weekend alongside Dak, but now they are bitter enemies as far as this tournament is concerned. Cruz, Ray, Frosty, and Gustify. And I feel like when you look at this four-player roster, if you go back and you really relive what we got to see last night, Frosty is an absolute animal. And although he got to at least showcase a lot of that through a lot of different iterations of different rosters throughout the year, uh, through Challengers Elite, last night, that guy was going crazy. He dropped a 15 and 3 KD ratio on Hotel Search and Destroy to end up putting uh, Fisher down to the lower bracket. Absolutely absurd scenes. This four-player roster... As it's ups and downs, but here on land, they are looking to get the job done. Looking to get the job done. So let's see what maps they're going to be playing here in this winner's final for the best of five. We talked about trying to maybe shake things up a little bit, and that looks to be the case, at least for a lot of the maps and modes that we have here, Andy. Yeah, yeah you look at just the veto process altogether. Let's not forget that this, is, of course, is a rematch back in the opening group play match that we had to start off the entire tournament. And, well, two of those maps, Oklahoma Christian did not want to see again, and I can't blame them. They got a 100-point club on the Hydra hard point. Fortress Search and Destroy was a weird one. So they got rid of both of those two, tried to force out potentially for the Expo, but Northwood elected to go towards the hotel. And we were talking about it. As far as the best of five map set is concerned, this is probably Oklahoma Christian's best bet to try to take a series off of Northwood. That's exactly it. Right? We were talking about how they're going to be able to do it, and even talking to Cruz a little bit earlier on in the day, says, listen, we're probably going to have to 2 three, five Northwood if we're going to beat Absolutely. them. These guys are just so damn good in hardpoint. I mean, just the slaying power that this roster has is incredible at times, and sometimes it is overwhelming. Last time they played, it was overwhelming. Will it be a different story? It's time to find out. Let's get into the winner's final. Oh, man, Mock Infinite immediately able to find the two to start things off. Northwood on the favorite side of the map. Gus still alive, and well, Gus for his first life. 
will open up with three in a row, but that's the only kills that the Eagles have found so far as Northwood are accruing time here at one. Rossi also able to get through the back, so maybe a big opportunity to try to flip out the spawns early for Oklahoma, and well, Frosty able to come up with that first one. Still a little bit more work needs to be done. You have to search for infinite. Here's a slippery one, and wow, what a snapper that is. Frosty, though, able to make sure all of his teammates spawn up with them. Still a lot of time, however, going over to Northwood. And Northwood are going to have to feel pretty comfortable with just soaking up for a one time here, especially through the opening engagements. So Oklahoma Christian spawning on the right side of the map actually ended up flooding back through the double arches, so they'll actually influence the spawns going in towards this P2 rotation in just a few seconds, but have you been counting numbers? Have you been looking for names? Bink is still alive, finally dealt with in towards the back, and at least the spawns might maintain for now. Northwood are already knocking at the door. Northwood able to get themselves right to the front. A, a big influence on the spawns here for Oklahoma Christian, but now you need to make sure the gunfights are coming through. Now they are. Justin Frosty able to open up a bit of space. Cruz for the back. Also with a big 1v1. Mock the last one up. Would have to do it all. He's overwhelmed. Gus gets the kill. And, well, Oklahoma breaks themselves in. Yeah, no, that's just a great discipline being exemplified by Oklahoma Christian. Just maintaining the back gallow spawn and then just waiting for the numbers to come back from the top rails and just wait for the gunfights to come your way. Northwood, though, they're trying to give themselves a good shake at this 20 seconds. You have to be careful here. You can keep the line in the sand drawn here, but you got to make sure that you don't get overwhelmed through the kills. Luckily enough, well, Northwood are going to be able to at least find a couple kills. They're maintaining presence on their side of the map as it currently stands, Austin, ahead of that P3 rotation. Love to see Gus get that streak. There it is. So now there is actually an ability to try to break open P3. Of course, the rotation is going to be won initially for Northwood Esports, but a big opportunity to try to break on through. One player going to spawn out. Bink has a chance to spoil everything from Oklahoma Christian, and how do you get a read on this? Bink finds one, but here comes the cruise missile. What will it find? The push for the front. Mostly shut down. Cruise missile comes in. It's good enough to connect. Can they get through? Cruise says yes, and they have a chance to try to break into the back. Last player is going to be infinite. He's still doing a good job and just maintaining his life. All these kills are going to be influential for Northwood off the respawns to try to recontest his hard point. Split spawns north to south, and somehow Pink just reads that. He's just fully understanding that players are going to be spawning south. Frosty inside the hard point will keep it in the Eagles' favor, but numbers are favoring Northwood. 20 seconds left on this hill. Ray, first kill for him. He's had a very slow start. He's mainly really just responsible for soaking up time here for Oklahoma Christian, but going to need a little bit more out of him if they're going to be able to come out with the dub. Very close game, though. It's going to be a few points ahead. Northwood Esports trying to now build that up, try to carry it over to the next rotation here. But the setup looking decent for Oklahoma Christian. Don't really hold the exits through the middle of the map, so a bit of space to work with, but now the kills need to come through. Cruise Missile to deny a full 60 over by P3. Yeah, I'll take that trade any day of the week if you are the Eagles. Gus is 13 and 4 right now. Wow, what a start out of him. And you already have top rails positioning. Cruise is trying to maintain such a presence. Team Nate unfortunately comes through. And it doesn't just matter. The Timberwolves just come through. They overwhelm the players' top rails. Last player is going to be Ray Cod. And, well, he just gets absolutely eviscerated. Nice break from Northwood. Oh, that was quick. Very, very clean. Coming through for Northwood Esports. This is what they do. This is where you have to be a little bit careful if you're Oklahoma Christian to make sure this game does not get out of hand, does not get away from you. When the snowball starts to come through, sometimes it's difficult to stop it. Gus, trying to get something going. What a gunfight that is. Mock will get the trade, but there is still a battle for this 15 seconds. Frosty gets the stick. Mock's got nowhere to go. And, well, that 10 seconds looks to be grabbed here for Oklahoma. So back and forth is his first set of hard points. So how many times have we said that? So many different hard points across so many different matches here in CCO Finals 2023. It's all about the bounce back. Who's going to be able to take control? And while well, three quick kills do come through in succession for Northwood, they'll hold on to the setup. It's a strong one here at five. Hawk under pressure. Frosty. Oh, man, this here. kid. How good has he been? He is just so fun to watch. And maybe that was what they needed to try to open up the point. Bink still inside of stables can try to keep the hill go neutral or let it go neutral. But Cruz is there to try to find him. Kills looking good. Dak now responsible for cleaning out maps. He's good to try to grab some of this high ground. Well, Dak flying. Only 10 and 11. But this, that silence push might just be the conclusion of the final 20 seconds. I, I will say this much, though. The Eagles constantly putting themselves in a position. Make sure that nobody from Northwood can comfortably get set up inside the hard point. And, I mean, this is what? Like, the, the past 15 seconds have just gone neutral inside of P5. Nobody wants to step on side of the hard point because they know that you're going to have ARs to deal with for the Eagles. That hard point is just going to remain vacant. Going in towards the second set, it'll be a very small lead that Northwood have. But look at all the kills again in quick succession. Northwood, as soon as these hard points have been popping up, the kill feed has all been theirs. Ray, the only one on this side of the map right now. He needs something big from him again. And well, he delivers. Is he able to grab that first kill? 
Fink should be able to get the call out. And Ray's just going to simply hold on to his life. His teammates, though, struggling to get through the map. We'll see if they have an opportunity to try to get a full-on spawn clip or at least get Northwood off the dime because they're starting to soak a lot of it up. And now Ray has been dealt with. This is where you have to be a little bit worried. You do not want to get trapped in the back. Good kills. Again, that's a lot of time. The Eagles have just been allowed to soak up for Northwood. And again, hey, this is almost a rinse wash repeat of what we got towards the end of the heat one in the first set. The difference is, though, that Northwood have completely given up, especially through the middle of the map. They've been constantly putting numbers in towards the backside and munitions to deny all these players from Oklahoma Christian to come flying through the open archways. There's a lot of scrappy gunfights coming across Fortress at this moment of time. Oklahoma Christian still trying to battle for munitions control. They have numbers, and now that should also influence the spawns of the back. But Frosty also, I like the route. Think has no idea what's happening, and well, Frosty puts together four in a row. So maybe a moment here for Oklahoma Christian to start to soak some time on P2. Everybody from Northwood coming through the middle of the map. Cruz with a hell of a snap up top. Frosty has also now earned himself five in a row. Cruz two off of a Cruz himself too. Alan Fletcher would be a couple streaks. If you remember back in the first set, hey, the Cruz missile was the reason when Gus got it of why they were able to influence P3. 27 seconds remains over by P2, and Gus is already over here by Cloud. Now, I mean, you have to turn and deal with him if you are the Timberwolves, and they're actually electing just to chalk the scrap time. 20 seconds is going to be allowed to go to the bank of Oklahoma Christian. Cruz is still alive up on a force free. Going to get the Chow versus Dak. His teammate gets taken down. And elsewhere over by P3, at least Northwood were able to deal with Gus in that very annoying position. But Cruz, he's still one kill away from getting that missile. Right. That's how they broke it last time, as you framed up. A chance to try to earn it again. Ray, I'm sure, ready to bait for him, but Cruz going to go to the front. Everyone else going to start to push through the gate. Ray's going to work through maps, but he's not ready for that gunfight. Bink just swings left to right, easily picks up another. Cruz doesn't want to fully commit for that gunfight. So, so far, 20 seconds secured for Northwood Esports. A chance to lock in the back 40 here, too. And Cruz is still waiting for this final kill, but he is taking a lot of time to get it. Crossy's going to call in his streak. Cruz gets taken down, two kills do come through, and Frosty's stuck at his tablet as well. I mean, even if this cruise missile finds value, which it doesn't, what were you going to be able to get off of that? You lost two players, the information comes through, and Northwood are going to lock in a full 60 at P3. It was the cruise missile that broke it up at the first set. The cruise missile will find absolutely nothing, and Cruz was unable to find that sixth kill. So now the resources are off the table. Northwood have built their lead to 50-plus points. Oklahoma Christian have to then give up scrap time and set up here at noon. Oh man, the zoning through mid has just not really been very good for Oklahoma Christian. We always talk about the fact that if you're going to give a lot of time over for P3, you need to try to keep them pinned back there or at least make it difficult for them to cut through the middle of the map. That has not been the case. And well, because of it, they are now lingering just outside the point. But kills still need to come through. A chance to hold on. Oklahoma going to need these kills. Bink from the back will not find anything. Locked down low. Working with the AR will be able to open up a bit of space. Takes Oklahoma off the time. And now there's a chance for some of the high ground to come through as Dak puts together two and lines them up up top. I mean, they just completely exploded. Dak for three. Now on four in a row. 24 and 20. The break surely on in. Northwood will be over 200 points. Oklahoma Christian have to try to contest some of this time, but cannot overextend and give up spots. Cruz will find two over inside P2. Trying to couple that along with Frosty, who's 24 and 16. Top rails, he will find the kill on the deck. But look at the spawns. All of Oklahoma Christian overextended. They've allowed those back found spawns to come through from Northwood. So now Oklahoma Christian, you need to get this back, what, seven seconds? And then you also have to find some kills. Ray was all by himself inside P5. Cruz was supposed to be his assistance. Is the only kill to find for Oklahoma Christian. And Northwood will be in for the initial time once again. Gus, able to win a big kill, but he has really slowed down, hasn't he? 17 and 10 at one point in time. Hasn't been able to find that same flow. Northwood Esports doing everything they need to to try to close out map number one. A lot of P5 last time did go neutral. Seems to be the case here so far. Crossfire is being set up. Gus just wants to keep him off the time. Septex will be blocked. Trophy system down to protect Northwood. But can they get into the point? Gus doing a good job of playing his life. More kills need to follow, and Gus just keeps on finding them. Up to four in a row as some more of this time goes neutral. One more player. It's going to be Mock. Gets taken down. 20 seconds. Oklahoma Christian are looking to soak up. You should know that all these players are still spawning in over by P3, but Infinite's already slipped the net. And to your point, Austin, when we were going from three to four, the same point has to remain that Oklahoma Christian, they need to try to keep Northwood trapped, but nobody was in a position to keep them on the backside of gate. Dak is already flying past dub steps. You already have Bink inside the current hardpoint. Spawns are over by the bench. Northwood, 225 and counting up. 
can't put too much focus on the spawn here because Northwood Esports last time they got about half the hill off the P1 and they are just 20 seconds away for the dub. Dak and Bink put together some kills. Ray has to get kills on the point. Able to get one and weakens up the second. Gus now in position to try to cut down the Northwood players making their way over to the hill. Gus now puts himself right in the truck looking solid but what can Cruz do down low? He's got to make a big play. Peter's advantage for Northwood. They're waiting for the timing. Infinite spawns out. Nando's gonna be in behind this entire play. Frosty was not ready for it. Gets the turn and the burn. Now Cruz needs to become activated. Has no dead silence, but the way that he's moving would definitely make the argument that it looks like he does. Gus has a cruise missile in his back pocket, let's not forget. But the challenge inside the hard point is still good. Northwood won't be able to close it out here, but they're keeping it scrappy ahead of the P2 rotation. Oh, just trying to hold on. Frosty's able to get himself in. Ray comes up big for one. Here comes the cruise. Gus gonna drop it down, but Mock able to clear out P1. Not very many members left on the map for Oklahoma. Now you're gonna have to fly to new. 235 to 210. This would be the final attempt to try to break it open, to try to extend the hard point. You're gonna have to go. Ray from inside ammunition finds nothing. They line up in open, and Northwood Esports should be good to hold on. The trade is there, and they will secure map number one on Fortress Hardpoint. Oh man, did it ever feel like that we were so neck and neck throughout the entirety of the first set? The cruise missile there in P3 for Gus, who starts off just with an absolute hammer in Northwood's face. He was able to at least keep that P3 contested, but ever since that point in time, when we, what, 20 seconds was neutral on P5, that Northwood just fully understood the task at hand. We need to start getting players in these power positions. We need to get our submachine guns further forward, contesting maps, contesting, uh, especially in munitions. And once all of those positions were maintained for Northwood, Oklahoma Christian had no response whatsoever. Sure. It, it really does say a lot. I'm not trying to harp on Ray by any stretch of the imagination, but when you have only one individual sub that is trying to meet the pressure of what both of the subs of Northwood are laying down on the table, the pace just gets thrown out the window. Uh, I mean, Ray can try to go one for one in so many different instances, but when he's overextending, he doesn't have the assistance from his AR, it, it almost feels like an unfortunate 3v4. It, and sometimes that's just what it looked like, especially through the second set of those hard points. Just very easy for Northwood to keep these power positions contested continuously. They were accruing way too much time. They get that full 60 off of P3. And just in that moment, when you ended up calling that all of Oklahoma Christian, they should have been in a position to keep them trapped over there. Nobody was pouncing on the right uh, places on the map, too, in Forsyth. Right. You know, I think that was the biggest issue. And when you talk about Fortress, right, like, we know what's going to happen usually at P3. Almost, you know, 80% of the time, it's going to be a full lockdown of 50 seconds plus if that full squad is there in the back and wins the rotation. The close spawn is just so dangerous to deal with, and you have to win so many fights, unless you have things like the streaks. And they did a really good job of it the first time. But that was the biggest difference for me. It was that transition from three to four where they were playing just a little bit too tight, right? And, you know, you do that against a team like Northwood, you give them a lot of room for Dak and Infinite to figure out how they want to break it. And, well, more often than not, they're going to be able to get themselves in. And we saw it happen a multitude of times. So a costly map one, but I think coming in, Oklahoma Christian already expected the fact that the hard points probably were going to be a really tough take up against this Northwood eSports squad. Uh, but we'll see what happens kind of going forward. We take a look at the scoreboard here, Andy. Big game coming through for Dak and Bing. Yeah, I, I mean, look, the hard points, it's kind of the same conversation that we had versus Fisher last night, right? It is that the, the hard point, keep it close, try as you might, you're warming up your gunnies for the 2 3 5. A lot of pressure that you have to try to surmount, especially walking away from a map one loss, just to sit there and say, okay, guys, our win condition is a 2 3, two, three 5. You have to somehow expect to extend it to that map number five. But right. I mean, you have all the right pieces of the puzzle. Uh, Gus just came out of the woodworks, just absolutely frying everybody. They, the moment that the hard point did open up in P1, in the first five seconds, Gus was frying. Frosty was able to be inspired off of that. He also finishes off with a fantastic uh, stat line as well, as you see here on your screen. 33 and 24 for Frosty. 24 of those eliminations were not traded. Keep in mind, you 25 and 31 for Gus was also not traded. And just about everybody had a minute plus of hard point time as well. But it's what Gus was able to do when he was inside the objective itself. It does it for me, Austin. Oh, 10 yeah. of 31, all of those kills found inside of the objective itself. But it just wasn't enough. Everything I just talked about for Oklahoma Christian just gets blown out of the water. I mean, Mach 14 of 25 of his kills for 50 seconds of objective time was inside of the hard point. 12 for Bink out of the 32 and 21 kills, or 32 and 21 KD ratio with a 25 not traded kill. Uh, that's just absolutely absurd. The damage numbers speak for itself in the assists soon to follow for players like Cruz, Gus, and Infinite to boot. So it was close. It was definitely competitive, I'm sure, than what a lot of people were suspecting for Oklahoma Christian. 
They were talking to all of us. They were feeling really hot and giddy coming into this hard point. But to our point again, it all has to start here on the LSU Search and Destroy. Oklahoma Christian need to come alive. We have not seen a lot of LSU Los Search and Destroys played up until this point, right? There hasn't been too many of them. Yesterday we got a couple of Mercados pretty late in the day. But it feels like we've really just been mainly seeing those hotels kind of thrown into the mix here and there. Get a few embassies, of course. Uh, but we'll see how the LSU Los Search and Destroy kind of comes along because this is a map where... I feel like it would still favor a team like Northwood with their ability to use the aggressive subs, especially players like Infinite, right? That dude. Man, it's just annoying to track this guy down. I, I think a lot of people in the community are like, don't like playing against those type of players that find a kill and then it's like, they're Houdini. They're just gone. You don't know where they went. And it feels like LSC, though, really does facilitate a play style like that, right? Play to the strengths of the game. I'm just saying, man. Like, hey, that's why a lot of people were having a lot of hard times uh, versus the University of North America, the Dragons. It's just how they manipulate the map. Right. I mean, we'll call a spade a spade. They were playing ratty. Like, they just, this is what you have to do sometimes. And Infinite has been that guy for quite some time. Bink is also a player that needs to, you need to watch out for. And by the time you're done checking every single possible corner that is on LSU, I mean, how many corners do you reckon is on a map like oh, LSU? Oh, God. Like, somewhere you're like 120? <laughs> then Dak is running you down. So, like, it, it's just it's very difficult to be able to take down a team like Northwood Absolutely. for what they have to offer, all the tools of the trade. That's why we put a big focus point on Oklahoma Christian, specifically players like Frosty. Sniper rifle play could also be on point. That way he can find those first bloods, like what he was doing on that hotel map number five yesterday versus Fisher. It could really put Northwood on their back foot. And then you also have Gus and Cruz. Let's not forget LLC, though, is a much bigger map. Triple AR could absolutely be on the card. That's right. You know, working through mid is what we typically see, but you've seen a lot of plays develop throughout this year, being able to push through those side lanes and really... Just kind of sandwich some of the defensive members in sometimes when you start to utilize them, especially, like you said, when you open up with a big kill. So we'll see what happens, but I love that you go to Frosty because it's hard not to talk about that kid after what he did. I mean, 16 kills in that final map on Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably good that there's not a Hotel in the mix. I'm sure that they were watching over maybe some of those games from yesterday and uh, and really did not want to make sure that was in a map two, map five. And I can't say I really blame them whatsoever because he was just yeah. in takeover mode. And if you can get a similar performance like that, not asking for 16 kills, but the ability to be able to stop the playmakers. I feel like it really could set them up for a lot of success, but it's a lot to ask for, especially from this kid uh, who has been very consistent, but we'll see if he can still be consistent versus this dominant. I mean, I'm not asking for 15, 16 kills, but it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I wouldn't say no. Could you imagine your consistency on LAN at CTL Finals? Just like, yeah, hey, you know, search and destroy. I'm just averaging 15 kills to search and destroy. That would just be rather zany, but... It's all about teamwork, especially when you get to this upper echelon, even in collegiate, because I mean, it's North. It's Northwood. Like, look at the players that are on this roster. If you think that you're just going to completely outgun these these guys on Northwood, you're blasted. If you think that you're going to outsmart them, maybe you might have a chance. I mean, that is part of the reason why we constantly talked about why Northwood, Fisher, why they always were losing search and destroys. Things were getting a lot closer to them. Right. It's just for the time that they have spent, not necessarily with, but away from each other as well, when it comes down to an integral game mode like search and destroy. That's where we put a big focus on Oklahoma Christian, who have been really grinding it out to make sure that they at least have some understanding of the 2 3 5 so that way they can try to win some of these series. Well, that does certainly put a lot more pressure on them to have to win this one, try to live up to what they had set out for expectations coming into today knowing this one would be tough but it's already off to a much better start compared to what we saw the first go around when these two played up against each other right there was opportunities without a doubt to try to win that map number one so that's got to at least let you know that hey we're competitive we're here it's just a couple of those mistakes that something we've kind of just been referring to over and over again versus these top speeds it feels like all weekend long where it just you make one big mistake, a second big mistake, and all of a sudden North Esports able to capitalize, able to get the job done. We'll see if that continues to go here for them as the players are just getting ready to jump into the map. But I think the one thing I do always love about Northwood is that win or lose, like even after like that teammate from Mach yesterday in Fortress that kind of costed them that round 11 versus Dragons, it feels like the vibes are just always there. Even when they're down, not that they ever find themselves down in a series, so maybe yeah. that changes if it goes 2-1, right? But it feels like the vibes are certainly always there, and that's just got to help so much, especially when you have long days like that. Yeah, the smile just becomes what, like a, a more, much more of like a grimacing grin, I suppose. Like they, sure. Maybe that, that's what ended up happening if you end up going down in a series if you are Northwood, but I mean, we haven't really seen them in that position. Exactly. Whether it's online, whether it's here on land, 
it's very rare they, they're going to find a team like Northwood in such a position like that. And it's a continuation of what we ended up having last year when they were playing with uh, Kevin Fame and, and Chris Radial as well. It's yeah. just you, know, you got such a superstar team that it becomes very difficult to be able to uh, put this roster on their heels. But never say never, right? Never Championship never. Sunday, it's Call of Duty, a day-to-day eSport as it may be. Anything could happen. Cinderella stories were certainly meant to be written. And I can't count out that Oklahoma Christian roster. I mean, they're talented. Uh, this Northwood roster is definitely the best one here. I think we can all agree is that they are the number one team here on land. That much has been yep. proven. But they are definitely being put to the test. I was uh, That hard point was hellaciously close. That's exactly it. That's what you got to keep in the back of your mind. You know, if I'm a competitor in that spot, listen, we just played probably the best hard point team of the tournament. We lost by 40 seconds. We didn't play access maybe too well in some of those points that we should have. If so, maybe it's a different game. Who knows? But... I have to try to just forget about it, move on, focus on that 2-3-5 that they just continue to rely on. That's how they said they were going to beat this Northwood roster. We'll see if they can get the job done. Finally, getting ready to jump into El Asilo. Search and destroy. Have not seen too many of them so far this weekend. We'll see what we're in for as we get ready for this gap number two, Andy. That was a fun podcast, though, I'll tell you that much. Have fun filling all that time with you. I'll let up. I'm going to drink it later. I'm going to relive it. Map number two is going to be big. Oklahoma Christian, I mean, you got to have it. If you go down 0-2, flat out, you lose the series. Whether you win the control, you can force it to a map number four, it has to be the 2-3-5. Plainly put. Offense first, of course, will be coming through for Oklahoma Christian. Bomb in the hand for Ray. It's going to be a brute force through the middle of the map. And through the outskirts right away. Wow, what a chow that is. Rossi just really takes that one pretty easily, but members now starting to drop. Cruz has been able to push forward, but, I mean, both players are kind of trapped in the site. It will slowly work out, and, well, how about that angle from Frosty? He's going to catch Dax, slip it a little bit, looking for some information, trying to maybe get behind that play. And now we'll drop into a two versus two. Double whammy. Able to at least find the trade and recover the bomb. Will be planted. Sun should open up the door. And the timing has just completely eluded Mock. Gently covered in his face. Cruz will find the kill on the bank. And wow. Frosty for the flank. Frosty for three in the round. And there is a reason why we talk about this kid. In search and destroy. My heavens. I mean, the first kill, let's be candid. Kind of got given to him. It was a very egregious chow out of one of that, <laughs> those Northwood players. Just jump chow on a player laying prone right. in billiards. But he forces his way for that second kill because he had to. Recovers the bomb. Joins the likes of Cruz, who got that A-bomb control. And it's much like you said, they were trapped in there. But... I mean, so much as those two players are trapped in there, I think that they ended up reverse Uno parting that, saying that Northwood were trapped in there with them. A wonderful flank for Frosty to find three in that round. Yeah, I think that's what I'm most impressed about with Frosty, especially, you know, since we haven't really got to see him a whole lot on broadcast throughout Challengers, throughout maybe CCL. But we'll see exactly if he can try to keep it going. 3-0 start. Dak not going to mess around whatsoever on their first attacking round. He will get this bomb down immediately. Cruz is already working through a flank in the back. What can you do from this positioning, though, if you are Cruz? I mean, you would have to assume that he used that style to get in that positioning. And in a post plant, you have such little time to try to make this work. Okay. A lot of info. Tough gun fight. Dak does run into him. Cruz up top. Ah, doesn't find anything. But still a chance. Two versus two. Gus gets one. All down to Infinite. Will they hop on the bomb? And can Infinite try to clutch this one up? Just has to play the clock. He's going oh, for the spam gross. shot. Oh, how greasy is this? Will it work out? No, no, it does not. Infinite going to drop another big clutch play coming through here for Oklahoma. You know, it's very rare that we get to a certain point. Bomb being planted. All eight players are still alive. Cruz goes on a very long flank. There's nobody trying to challenge him for the clock face. <laughs> and he comes from behind. And he finds absolutely nothing but Two players that were left alive inside of El Asilo was Gus and Frosty. Two players that you would probably want to be alive because they sure. just they got their hands real dirty in the middle of that A-bomb, let me tell you, Austin. It just brute forced their way in there. Frosty was just overwatching Gus. The wall bank shots as much as they do hurt. That is the trust that you do have between those two players to make sure that the job does get done. Frosty, four in a row. Gus now up on three. Four and oh for Frosty. Maybe an early cruise missile. Potentially in the cards for Oklahoma Christian. But Frosty, he's not one of those players that's going to sit back and wait for kills to come to him. No, he's not. Time to hit the Jets. Fly on forward. We'll see if his play will work out. Cruz has dropped in the meantime. He was kind of isolated in the back. Frosty does make his route work out for one. Shot's not fully clean for the second. 
And Gus will make sure that he does secure it. However, still one off of that cruise missile will be Frosty. That bomb's dropped in a very serious spot. He's just got to pick it up and just continue to fly. Dead Silence was popped almost like a minute ago, and he still has it. <laughs> cruise missile has been earned. Keeps on getting reset, 1v1. Where's Frosty go with this? He is clearing so much space. Dead Silence will run out. Oh, he's not going to see him. No, he's not. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. That's a consolation loss. I mean, Northwood are going to be happy to at least win that round. Frosty did get the cruise missile, though. It needs to be said. He almost went on a tangent. He almost got the entire ace. Crying out loud. This guy is just absolutely insane. That what would be a potential that was a 1v3. Found the, the first kill for free. Recovered the bomb going into billiards. It's just that Mock was, I mean, he's that guy. He oh, is. Yeah. I, I want to say as steady as you could possibly ask for an AR to be. He did. He went up towards that top tower. He did not move. Yeah, he showed a lot of respect to Frosty. He, he oh, knew yeah. that the sub was in play. The dead silence was still active. And he was just hoping that Frosty would run into him. And that's exactly what works out there. So, able to get one back. Northwood Esports have let a lot of rounds go where they've had the man advantage. Ray, aggressive down low to the double doors. It's such a hard position, though, to find a kill and then get out cleanly. And he might not even get a kill. He doesn't. Back in the fight, but look at Frosty. Frosty's here again. Oh, can't find the second. Good shots come through there for Infinite. And now, once again, dropping into a two versus two. Zach's got the bomb. He's going to try to join with his teammate here of Infinite. They're going to clear upper admin together where Cruz is just laying prone. Will rip that silence. Where does he go from here? Because Zach and Infinite are still waiting for this unforced air. They're quite, quite literally on top of each other behind the same bar. That silence was invested here from Cruz. Just going to clear out a few corners, but really get to utilize it as much as I think you would like to. Yeah. We'll have a chance to maybe surprise from the back as this play starting to come through for Northwood. It will be a plant onto the A site. Looks like it should go down safely. And now even Infinite able to push out. Both players going to play on opposite sides, but Cruz is ready and waiting. Now all down to Infinite. Oh, he's just playing low on tools. I thought he was up top in the kitchen window, but he's in a position to at least try to clutch this round. He's going to be able to isolate these two players though, Austin. Discipline from Infinite here. He's going to get a great read on one. He knows where the other was. 20 seconds on the clock. Can he finesse? Will Gus go for the hop? No, he's playing for the kill. But, oh, Infinite just throws a little shoulder in. I mean, just what a smart play. Gus just forced to lay on the bomb. Check comes through, and Infinite Dude. just playing with his food, Andy. I mean... That's as beautiful as you'd ever like it to be. My goodness, what a play from Infinite. I mean, he didn't get the last kill, but you don't even need to. Bomb will detonate. Two rounds on the bounce there for Northwood after losing the opening two. And that's why we talk about Infinite. Just as a player, it doesn't matter the mode. That is just how this guy plays Call of Duty. I, I, he just holds his life for so long. And in that 2v2 right there with Dak planting the bomb, I was almost worried because Infinite did give up the site. I thought he was going up towards top kitchen window. Mm. But he was down in tools, just expecting the flank to come through. And it just simply didn't. He just plays his life, throws his shoulders, knows his timings oh so well. Northwood, even things up in around five we go. Win stuff here. Trying to put together some more rounds. Looking for three. Back the attack for Oklahoma Christian. This time it's missile. not an aggressive play down low over to A. But the cruise missile does come in. And it's not going to find anything. Won't find a kill. Does force everyone to back up, though. Will they decide to commit to B, or will they just come back to A? Ray is pushing up with the bomb. He loses his life. Two for one trade. But that bomb is, uh, you know, it could be in a worse position, I guess. But it could definitely be in a better one. Good. I mean, look at where Mock is here. Feels like these doors are going to open. He should have some free shots. He won't finish off the kill, but, I mean, that's all the info you need. Northwood have a good triangular setup. Set all the way around B. Frosty does manage to get the bomb. And so there is a chance to get back to A. We've seen a lot of clutches here so far from Oklahoma. Always the man disadvantage. We'll see if it can work out here again. On the flank, where does Frosty go in this post plane? You'd probably reckon that he'd probably be inside the site. He's just going to break open a few doors, play with his couch. Infinite, just... Maneuvers his way back over towards the challenge. Cruz, no dead silence, has to sprint. He has to get to this bomb, Austin. He's going to start spam shotting. We'll find the kill, but there is just so much time. All right, Bing. But he's got to wait for dead silence. And it's just but, I mean, it, it's just off of that play, right? I, I mean, you get Frosty calling in the cruise missile. It's a very slow rolling offense. 
and Ray pushes all the way up outside a kitchen window. He's on the roof shingles above tools. Yeah. And when he loses his life, who's supposed to be the next person that's supposed to find that trade? Your ARs are in Narnia. They're not in a position to try to watch where Ray is going. And maybe they thought off the information that Frosty was able to convey off of that cruise missile that maybe they could try to collapse on the players over by the B-bomb site. Not the case at all. Like you called out, Mach was all the way back, kept safeguarded by a trophy system next to that pickup truck. Got a player all the way to the right side of Pride Rock. It was a great response, honestly, out from Northwood. They get the resource out from the back pocket of Frosty and a one-round lead to boot. Yeah, for me, if you want to do a play like that, just let someone else carry the bomb. But here we are. Ray still looking for his first kill. And it feels like Northwood really starting to run over Oklahoma. A lot of the rounds that they won, you know, again, came by way of clutch. So we haven't really seen too many first bloods and then winning around through a man advantage and using your numbers correctly. Oh, look at this. Frosty. Oh, well, he's been sniffed out. Looks like the barrel is just sticking out past the door. So the first blood, again, here for Northwood. Dak will grab it. Cruz should be able to find Bink here. And, well, shots were also taken top white. So Cruz might be able to put a lot of pressure on this player. But, oh, he's got a snap. And, well, <laughs> we've seen Cruz pull off a lot of turn-ons. He gets some good damage but just doesn't get the kill. I thought he was going to do it again. <laughs> about you being casting crews or he just gets the turn. Oh, man. 2v3. Bomb's going to be planted here at A. And Dak is also inside the bomb site. So where's Infinite go? He's going to elect to play over by the benches. Ray, AR in hand. And I have to couple this along with Gus. He's going to rip that silence to try to open up doors. Got to see something from Ray here. Just at least one. 30 seconds on the clock here. Gus down low. Or rather, actually side by side with him. They're going to go for a little bit of a double team. This is taking a lot of time and they found nothing, so... It feels like this round is probably wrapped up, and with that kill, it should be. And while well, both end up coming through, I believe they're from Bank Northwood Esports. Four rounds in a row. Goodness. This is a duo. Remember that? Yeah. I feel like it wasn't that long ago. Pepper Farms, definitely. I, it's just the adaptations, the understanding, the dissection of the map is just absolutely disgusting. The reactions out. Northwood, understanding that Cruz is that dead silence player, that second dead silence player alongside Frosty, is trying to find a lot of plays. So you just put your ARs further back. You just wait for that push to come all the way through. It has not worked out. Oklahoma Christian, this is a big round to take. Ray's still looking for his first kill, and Frosty has slowed down after earning that Cruz missile. Let's see if Cruz can try to work Mock, and while Mock's toying with him, this is also going to give maybe a chance for Infinite to try to push out. Cruz is going to reposition, try to maybe catch Mock off guard. But for now, everything coming to a standstill here. Still 4v4. Cruz is still working for this kill on Mock, but he's not really finding any clear shots. Uh, Mock is just playing with his food at this point. He can keep snaking up there. See the nameplate. Understand I still have control of this side of the map. Now all four players for Oklahoma Christian. Stack up together. Frosty's going to be that entry player, but he's doing this with attack. Clearing a lot of space, but Northwood are not giving Oklahoma Christian any gunfights. They're going to have to do this quickly. Northwood are starting to surround the A site. They're going to be attacking from just about every single angle. Infinite from the back and open the door. No one's going to hear it. First blood is there. Bink follows up with a second. Bomb will See? go down, and Frosty's able to come up with two. They don't expect that position that he gets to. So this is still winnable. Ray's going to play on site, and now Mock's going to try to deal with Frosty from the back. This is all point of contact off of Ray, which is playing inside of the bomb site. to your point. Going to throw out a couple warning shots. Frosty pounces. There's his third in the round. He's looking for the entire ace here. Infinite is quite literally a bullet. Frosty aware of it. Just holds the positioning. Gets completely bamboozled. Infinite will find one. 16 seconds, and Ray's making the play. Ray, under so much pressure in this very moment, just has to play his life. He's hearing shots go off. And, well, it looks like he has done enough and will get on the board as well. So just a nice little feel-good kill to make sure he gets the first one. And Frosty, I mean, every time we talk about Oklahoma winning a round, it comes by way of him. Oh, John, he found three in the round. Bomb gets planted. And all of that is point off the information of what Cruz was able to collect. You know that mock is top tower. I want to say it was Dak that was down low in the A control zone that ends up trying to take the challenge. Cruz stays alive. And you get that information to your other two teammates. I don't see anybody top kitchen. So they're just able to flood inside of kegs. You have two players around B, two players on the outskirts of A. You have full control of the A bomb site. Frosty pops dead silence. He's double positive, gets inside of tools. What are you supposed to do? Now Northwood only lead by one. A 
by one. I want to try to tie it on up, though, after going up early. Well, it just feels like North would never really mess around, but shots come through, and a chow up top for Rosti! Again, finding just incredible kills, another big 1v1. And that's going to shake things up a bit for Northwood, but it's not going to stop them from committing to the plan. They have just cleared everything. I mean, you got Ray. He, he doesn't see anything over by the A control zone. You just had everybody clear through the football field in from behind. You know that Northwood are all around the A-bomb. Who's going to drop? 3v3 we go. You said it. You feel like you should be able to dissect the setup, figure out where they're playing. Oh, Frosty doesn't win that one. But Goss well, comes up with two. Hold on a second. 20 seconds. Dak. He's playing inside the site. He's going to have to snap on one and then the second. Do they line up? Oh, just about. But Ray, again, for the final kill, comes up big. Woo, buddy, I tell you. <laughs> for a second, it was just mere pixels away from both of them being lined up side by side with each other. And if there's anybody to do it, and it ain't Frosty, it's probably going to be down on the opposite side. But <laughs> I mean, Frosty... I feel a little bit of deja vu here, Austin. He's a problem, man. He is a oh, yeah. real problem in Search and Destroy. He gets Dead Silence again, opens up with that first blood, and then you end up having Cruz pushing through the football field. Ray is playing up towards the top tower. You allow the bomb to get down, and you have cleared every single part of that map that is just the trade game. Gus delivers on the two. Oklahoma Christian deliver on the goods. Tied up once again in round number nine we go. How about this play? Gus going to get right up to the top bench, Heady. Gonna try to put some pressure on anyone that would be looking over the B site. But Bing's going to go all the way to the back. And he's got support just in case they do decide to commit. Bach can very much help and maybe kind of get himself in a spot where he can watch that cross. But for now, Bink's got everything handled. Very, very slow approach to this round while the bomb sits down low in front of A. They are just playing off the overextension. I mean, if there's anybody that might do it, it would be to be us. Like, he's all the way on the outskirts of the football field. We're just going to open up with first blood Dak. Ray doesn't check that corner spam shots as well. Dak finds the trade and gets out with his life. He was ready for the second one for sure. Already sure was. Brandon Brand firing away. Mock going to take the high ground. Dak just going to sit down low. And, well, you know if you killed Ray, that was probably the bomb here. But it will be picked up. Frosty now going to make his move into the site. Have to be careful. It feels like Frosty was maybe trying to bait out a sound cue, see if someone was looking to attack. Trying to rip him off the site. Here we go. Bomb going down. Great cover fire from Gus. Able to get himself one of the bank. And, well, one up close for Mock. But it would have to be a 1v3. Now a 1v2. He might have saw Frosty, but no. Doesn't fully see him. But he's hearing Gus up top. He sure is. And he's trying to isolate this kill. The longer that Gus stays alive, Mock is just trying to find the kill. Comes back through kegs. And how about it? Three rounds on the bounce for Oklahoma Christian. The Eagles are here to play. Frosty loaded into that with a sniper rifle, by the way. And Gus was the only player that was going to potentially give an isolated 1v1 over by the B-bomb site. And by the time, whether he saw Bink give up that angle or not, that is the freest flank I've ever seen in my life. Gus gets up top. He gets down low lockers. He shoots Bink in the side, who was about to make a godlike play to stop from that bomb from being as secure as it was. And from there on out, it's just the isolation of the kills. 12-6 and six now for Frosty. Got ourselves a game. We might just have ourselves a series if Oklahoma can clutch one more round out here over the next two. Offense for Northwood. Oh, infinite. I like the timing of this. This could work out beautifully here for him. And Gus gives up the angle. Inside of storage, infinite's able to get all the way through. She feel like you should be able to find a freebie up top, but instead Cruz will actually just be taken out from Bank, and now infinite's in the back. Rossi. Rusty's on an island. Hello. What weapon does he have over there? I mean, Infinite is still causing ruckus. Top party is able to at least find one. Now Frosty gets cut down. Gus! Well, you know, a 1v4 would be pretty dope, but um, he's not even going to get a look at a gunfight. Round 11, we go. Northwood just completely flipped the script. That was a lot of focus over towards the football field, and there was a lot of warning shots, a lot of nades that was thrown over here by the B control zone, quite candidly speaking, that it just allowed Infinite to come flying through the middle of the map, get up top. He found the first along the way, and then good shots on towards the second. And there on out, numbers dwindled in Oklahoma Christian. As good as that three-round bounce truly was, now they find themselves in a round 11. Round 11, and this is that hurdle that a lot of those teams that are looking to beat the Northwoods, looking to beat the Fishers, that they kind of struggle with these final closing moments. We saw it yesterday versus Fisher, but all oh, the <laughs> nades just fine. Frosty 
That is not a player you want to see gone if you're Oklahoma Christian right away. What a read. And look what they do off of that. Mock goes back up towards top tower. You got Bink watching all the football field. Two players waiting for point of contact here at A. You got to find a pick or two to try to work your way back inside the site. And losing Cruz does not help out your odds. Not looking great. Northwood may have just done enough. 2v4. Bomb will go down. Gus has been an X factor. Quite a few rounds so far for Oklahoma Christian. Ray, though, I mean, this is the time you need him to come up with at least one. Not going to happen. Gus now last left alive. It would be for a 1v4 round 11 and would have to find it up the bomb. Runs, <laughs> runs out of ammo. Not mm. enough in the clip. That one's going to sting. They get so close, but they can't get through the final round, Andy. Oh, but it's that final hurdle to get over. You get to the round 11, you win three in a row after being 2-0 up. Northwood shows some great adaptations as well, fully understanding that the, not necessarily the sole reason, but Cruz was getting away with highway robbery through the early stages of that rip. That's odds with an AR. Very annoying to deal with on a map like El Asilo. That worked out wonderfully for Frosty then to get further uh, enabled throughout the entirety of the map. I mean, he drops a crazy stat line. But it's just simply not enough, not through what North would have been offering. There was not a single round besides that final round 11 that we got that North would offered up the same exact strategy of what they showed in previous rounds. And that is just what you get from players that are representing Northwood Esports here. The Timberwolves here to absolutely play. It is getting put to the absolute test, but a 2-0 lead nonetheless. Oh, 2-0 lead. That one again is going to feel just so frustrating. But what a great way to deal with Frosty in that round 11. I mean, great Shoot. set nades come out together and just drop immediately. I mean, you could see where Frosty was. Right? He was ready to hit that lane. <laughs> he was ready to make another big play. We've seen it so many times throughout that map with El Asilo where he was the right place, right time. Two rounds to close it out. Oklahoma Christian just can't get it done. And, well, that 2-3-5 that we talked about, no longer an option. It's going to have to be 3-4-5 if they want to stay alive in this upper bracket. Yeah, just reverse sweep Northwood. Just reverse sweep Northwood. I've never heard something easier to do on a Sunday. Yeah, just do it, forehead. I mean, honestly, I, I would have been so checked, especially off of that, that cruise missile call after Frosty goes on 6-0 start. Cruise missile gets dropped down. Ray drops the bomb, top of the pools on the shingles. You have to try to clutch that play up. Then you have that one next clutch round of infinite, and he's just, just throwing shoulders, playing his life in absolute nuisance to deal with. Dak is always changing his positioning continuously. Mach is a steady AR that you have to somehow get past, whether it's top tower or cutting out through the top and middle of the map. Woo, boy. This is not looking good for Oklahoma Christian. They really gave themselves so many good instances to potentially try to take that map. They led by two. They flipped the lead again, winning three rounds in a row, forcing a round 11 out of Northwood. And it's two set nades that, honestly, I feel like got thrown quite often, but it finds the opening kill onto your initiator of Frosty, who drops 12 and 8, 1,600 damage for the L, two first bloods to boot along the way. But you look at Northwood, as far as first blood ratio is concerned, three first oh, bloods yes. for Dak, three first bloods for Bink. Bink, more often than not, was that one B-Soul defender with an AR in hand, that third AR, if you will, most often for Northwood. I was watching a lot of those different lines of sights and was just opening up so many opportunities for Dak and Infinite to get into these very annoying positions they drop a combined 20 and 16. Crazy stuff, man. And yeah, a lot of those rounds in Oklahoma did win. It was 2v3s, right? Like mm -hmm. 1v2s, whatever it might be. It's just never really able to grab those first bloods, take advantage of it, and then run away with it. So it certainly does hurt them. Said that was kind of the map that they had to win. They get so damn close. But that final hurdle that we just keep alluding to, well, it just keeps getting the best of these squads trying to beat the best team currently here at the tournament. Whether it's not over just yet, there is still a chance to try to bring this one all the way back, but it's going to have to be a way of control, hard point, and then another search and destroy on a Mercado to see if they can try to get the job done. We'll see if they can do it. They have a chance to take a break, talk some things over, see if they can reset. For now, we'll take a short break. We'll be back with more Call of Duty action. The way we want to support the gaming space is, is threefold. One, we want to support the industry beyond the participants. We think that this industry is going to grow so much farther than just the games and the players themselves. Uh, we want to support gaming as a legitimate field of study and, uh, and support the students that want to focus on that, on that major. We want students and their families to know what to expect. 
So we're not just trying to get you through the transaction so that you can gain enrollment at your school. We want you to go into it eyes wide open and realize that, you know, if you quit school or six months after you graduate, there's going to be a payment at the end. And you should know what that is before you say, OK, as an introduction, we want to give and not take uh, by supporting the tournament. So, for example, with this tournament, we're not we're not asking for you to come take out a loan. Uh, we're looking at supporting the tournament and offering some sort of giveaway. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to College Cod as we continue the action here in the winner's finals. At the moment, feels like it is the same story here for Northwood as it was last year. They are currently up 2-0. to zero. A heartbreaker of around 11 was just lost there from Oklahoma Christian, and now they have uh, no other response other than to try to reverse sweep. Just, just do that. Yeah. I, um... Man, that round 11 is going to haunt Oklahoma Christian for a very long time. Again, it yeah. was a wonderful double set nay that came over the top and just kind of crushed all of the hopes after Oklahoma Christian went on a three-round-in-a-row stint. That heart point was really close. This search and destroy also very close. Comparatively, what happened in the opening group match when these two teams ended up facing off against each other, this 2-0 lead that North would have is tremendously a lot closer than what Oklahoma Christian were able to offer. But the control is also different going to the hotel. Again, you're just hoping for all of your usual suspects for Oklahoma Christian to not get this way, just to be able to come out here and get the job done. But Northwood are in the flow state, Austin. They're looking pretty primed to close it out here. It feels that way. And the only way that doesn't happen is if Ray steps up here for us. Andy. And it's a lot to ask for because Ray is probably the only one in this lobby that's you know, not really used to maybe constantly playing at this level. Everyone else is in challengers playing at a very, very high level, has played against a lot of you know, great competition throughout the year, and Ray at the moment just hasn't been able to hang. Now, it's not easy when you go up to the likes of this roster on Northwood. I completely get it, but if you want a chance to try to stay alive, to try to beat Northwood, you need that fourth member to really step up. You really do. And it's a, realistically, I mean, it's this guy, right? An absolute monster and a goofball as well. A lovely individual deck is, huh? Uh, I mean, he drops numbers. He makes the... Very selfless plays. Puts himself in a position, can play his life. Is there anything this guy can't do? Oh, I haven't really seen him sniping in what, since like maybe season one of Challengers Elite. But you know, regardless of the matter, Dak is a real issue yeah. to try to deal with. And it's kind of quite literally the cornerstone for this Northwood roster. I mean, you get some really good steady calls coming through from Bink. Infinite as that sub duo is also just really annoying and not only just playing his life, but is also really good at getting Dak's trade whenever it is required. And you have, like, one of the most steady ARs in amateur history for Call yeah. of Duty right now for Mock. I mean, he has definitely had a hell of a season. Right. This four-player roster complements each other so, so well. But really, the slaying, the heavy lifting at certain moments of time really comes through that guy bottom left of your screen. That is Dak. That's right. People even forget that, you know, he tried out for L.A. at the beginning That's of right. the year, too, right? Had some trials. Maybe wasn't picked up to the sub spot, but was certainly considered, and I feel like might be considered again, Going into next year, especially if he can keep this up and gain it into next weekend in Vegas as well. But still has to get the job done in Columbus, Ohio. And it might just be a grand finals after this math locked and loaded for these Northwood boys as they just continue to get the job done. We'll be heading into a hotel control. Bit of a different story. This is where your ARs can certainly deliver big. And I feel like Gus Cruz already been able to do that so far through this weekend. But already through that first map from what we saw as well. Absolutely. You just need to be able to somehow replicate that and then to get your SMGs into these very annoying forward positions. Cannot stress enough how potent that one part of the map honestly is. That check-in desk is godlike. Quite literally, just to deal with players either coming off the respawn or trying to assault that B control zone. But it'd be interesting to see we get a really good look to all of our questions of some potentially answers. It's going to be the Eagles of Oklahoma Christian on offense first. All right. Let's see what they're going to decide to do. They're going to bring some of the pressure right over to B. Good shot from Gus. Wow. Jeez. Will rip Bink right off of Godheady in the back. So that will create a lot of pressure on B. You can see a cut to the map though from Dak. He has a chance to play spoiler and attack this from top bedroom. I don't think anyone's going to get a read on this. And well, no, they do not. Dak good for one. Ray's still alive. This is where you need him to get one. And oh my, Mock blows him away. And resetting. Control the map. Where Bink is able to at least pick things up. The atrium goes one for one. The 
he got Gus over by the A control zone. Cruz is piecing on his second life. Now up to three in a row. Has one player up top inside a bedroom across the catwalk. That was infinite inside a couch. As Frosty will find that kill. They're going to leave Gus and Ray just to capture the A control zone. While Frosty and Cruz previously were at least trying to find further map positioning. And Frosty, so long as he holds his positioning, is just going to be so annoying. Gets traded out, but that A zone is capped. So far, so good. Early pressure to B, secure a tick. Able to get a very fast A zone. It's going to give them over two minutes to work with. See if they maybe get to infinite cleanly. Cleanly, the key word. He's able to grab one. As he's just finessing behind the chandelier. Ready for a secondary challenge. Frosty will give it to him. Need a trade to come in. And finally it is there. Gus will clean him up. Chance to try to get through the back. But now Dax also threatening a repinch through connector. Or could continue just to play his life through mid. And that's going to be the ladder if what he chooses to do. Just tries to stay alive through the middle of the map. With the atrium through the double arch. Cruz will have that pack 56 in hand. Now he's looking for further kills as well. He's going to be able to find Infinite. That's going to open up the second disc. That's back on the respawn through Spock. Couples along with Bink. We're just sprinting apparently into the line of sight of Dak, who's now up on three in a row. First segment was locked in over by B quite some time ago, but the map has restabilized in Northwood's favor. And that was your moment right there, but Dak just gets the job done. And well, another smart play from him. Doesn't fully commit to the challenge, just knows the importance of valuing your life. <laughs> That's Gus right down through mid. Now one of the ARs out of the picture. Ray caught out in no man's land. Dak is just running through everybody. He's up to five in a row. Six. <laughs> Three aim shots. Some big luggage will not be making it into their hotel room later today. Dak said silence is about to run out, by the way. And while well, he's not going to elect to actually jump up, as that dead silence has dissipated, now he's going to be creating quite the ruckus. This has taken a lot of time for Oklahoma Christian to try to piece together a push whatsoever. Rape will get caught out trying to push through the statue side. Two more players trying to make a route player on the back. It's going to have to come pretty quickly. And, well, Dak, he earns the cruise missile. He is just holding on to bedroom control. Mock shuts down. Both players through the back. And it just does not look good right now for Oklahoma Christian. Solid start. They have earned at least four ticks. Really outside of that first push to B. They have not had any real look at this zone. And looks like things will end here. One more play. Could come through for Frosty, but he would just about have to do it all. His teammates are all spawning in Kitchen, and Frosty will be dealt with. Great first round here for Northwood Esports. I mean, that's what, a combined 11 spree at the end between three different players for Northwood. I mean, you were able to at least get those four segments of progression if you are Oklahoma Christian. But, I mean, I would reckon that you could have probably gotten a whole lot more off of that. It just comes down to... Uh, that, that push around the back, I mean, you can almost seemingly give up bedroom and maybe try to get at least that second segment over by B, but it just felt like it was too much hesitation on what they wanted to do as far as their recontest is concerned. Do we want to send players around the flank? Do we want to try to get bedroom back in our control? Constantly asking yourself where Dak might be located at. Sometimes you just need to ignore him and just maybe try to go for the other of the two plays. So, Northwood, four segments is where the meter has been set at. Great. Trying to open up with the first engagement. Infinite will take him down to be push. Oh, boy. Gus needs to make up for it. He's going to drop. Waiting for the regen before he decides to chow on out. But the chow comes to him. Dak flies to the back of T1. Quickly dealt with. Mock now ready to try to stack the point alongside Bink. Both ARs now ready to watch over mid. Frosty gets struck back with the nade. Ray from the back. What can he do? Caught behind D1 again. And, wow, it is just all Northwood Esports. They've only lost one life. And Infinite's already threatening A. Yep, he's already over here, and he's on the zone as well. Frosty's going to be able to get the three shots infinite. Well, he would have had the read, but Cruz will just shoot him in the back. We'll get that kill. B-Zone has been converted over Northwood again. Have only lost two lives. Bink spraying is now on five in a row. The potential to get a second cruise missile from the Timberwolves was on the cards, but simply will not be the case at all. Oklahoma Christian are able to find some trades. They're able to get Cruz at least inside of Kitchen. Gus trying to contest through Seeker, but Dak is still piecing. He is looking to lap his street sauce, and he's 14-6. and six. Yeah, he will go down, but he was just about there to overlap it. Infinite now on the point. They got a read on where Cruz is, and he's going to be very hard-pressed to try to make a flank play work out. But Frosty does find a pretty good kill for the front. We'll see if he can maybe work his way into the zone. Mock and Infinite, as well as Dak, now all going to stack it. That third tick coming quickly. Kills need to be here for Oklahoma. They find two, but they can't clear it off fully. Cruz would have to get a double up here, and he won't find the 1v1. Dak continues to shred Oklahoma as Northwood take a very fast offensive round. You can see Dak just hands in the air, just box smiling across the board. All the boys of Northwood are just 
people are just having a ride and good time at Greenberg Hotel. No, I would say that much. I mean, it's just insane when, like, you, you see a lot of teams. You saw Oklahoma Christian go for B initially, and maybe you can garter a segment or two, but the recontest should have been there through couches, but everybody keeps flooding through statue, through back spa. Nobody hits the route for Oklahoma Christian, and they just lose all the gunfights soon afterwards. Northwood are just having their way. 11-6 for Fink, 17-6 for Dak. Casually playing through this map, number three. See a lot of frustration there on Ray's camp. Just hands on his eyes. <laughs> well, it's not any prettier. Gus, last one up, and oh boy, A has been shut down. Typically, you see the numbers overwhelm the defense when they split the map, considering they have to make sure they hold on to B pressure off the break. And we'll have a bit of a threat from Gus across the map, but Dak is just continuing to go on a rampage. Gus will get a read on it. We'll continue to get his kills. So. Things at least starting to open up a tad bit to maybe make something happen at B, but now Mox also in a great position up top in the balcony, just trying to do what he can to play his life, looking for kills, and is able to get one. Still able to find one. It's just crazy to me. You got two players over Oklahoma, but hey, going one for one is not so bad. Oklahoma Christian now able to string together five kills between Gus and Cruz. Gus, if he can stay alive, get himself that Cruz missile would be fantastic, but Hey, guess who's on the flank? Guess who's running routes? Yeah, that's right. Dak is back in top bedroom, baby. He is 20 and 8. Still has that cruise missile. Rips dead silence. He's going to push through Valet because his teammate's off the respawn. Already cleared all of the B control zone. Dak is on the flank. Gets one for free. Pink is solo holding over by A. And it's all gone wrong. Man, 2 and 17 right now for Ray. He just can't catch a break and he can't buy a kill. Northwood Esports by far. The best team here at CCL land. Nobody has been able to contest them. No one has really been able to send them to those map fours, those map fives. There's a one last attempt kind of available maybe on A, but two seconds on the clock. Ray going to try to keep the play alive. Street comes through. One more dolphin dive for Gus. The problem, the lives, even if they're able to somehow make a miracle happen and get the zone. It's going to be very difficult to transition over. And, well, there's the clearance. There's the win. Northwood Esports, they secure the 3-0 and advance the top two in the tournament. Ooh, boy. Not even wasting any time. Just standing up, letting them have it. I don't even know if words were had, but I like to assume that they were. This act just went 25-9. and nine. Like, what? Oh, it died nine times, Zach? Are you kidding me? Like, it's just, it, it really does say a lot. Uh, again, you know, we're, we, we're not going to sit here and beat a dead horse. It's just not, it's just outclassed. Like, like simply put, I mean, through gun skill, through yes. fundamentals, through, if you give me a COD term right now, Northwood did it better than Oklahoma Christian. Just plainly put, they are the best team. They are the better team. Oklahoma Christian at least kept it close to the first two maps. When it comes down to control, this is why we put a lot of stress in that map number two, and potentially even that map number one. This Northwood roster is just absolutely disgusting. Try as you might, Gus Frosty, as well as Cruz, you are not going to take down this four-player roster of Northwood so easily. They just have all the right tools. They're able to showcase all of the right maneuvers as well, Austin. Goodness me, are Northwood the best team on this weekend? They're looking crisp. They're looking clean. And, well, they might just be primed and ready to try to take a big dub. They now have that availability of the second best of five, if they even need it, if but it is there, yeah. <laughs> just in case. But either way, man, yeah, I mean, it's just complete dominance. You say it, Dak just has an incredible map, and it just always feels like there is somebody attacking from behind. Like, even when there's a lot of moments where it feels like they get to the zone, there's a moment here, they feel like they've cleared a bedroom. Somehow a route is taken. Somehow they miss out on one player. He gets there, and most times it was Dak. Put up just again, big numbers here in hotel. I mean, just look through some of these replays on some of the channels that Dak is just taking, some of the timings that he's just fishing out. He's just that player that you're always just questioning. <laughs> you need me, Cruz. Oh, no. That's hilarious. I caught up with Dak actually yesterday after um, after they won in that opening group match, and he said that he called Cruz's son. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Rory didn't like that very much, not even just one bit. But, hey, Dak is the real deal, man. It is just strictly business. He comes through, just have his, has his way. He just completely obliterated Oklahoma Christian, and the stats will reveal – all that plus some more. 3,000 damage. 22 of his 25 kills were non-traded. 17 of those kills were all on the defense, and I feel like about 16 of those were top end.
I know you said you didn't want to continue to beat a dead horse, but this is what I'll say about Ray, is that obviously he finds two kills through three rounds. That is unacceptable, I will say, especially yeah. at this point to the tournament. Yep. But it feels like he's taking a lot of big individual chows that are happening, and you're not getting any follow-up. Like, when you find yourself in the blender, the most important thing that you can ever do in Call of Duty is just to start holding hands with somebody. Hold for five seconds, wait for a teammate to come up, bait for him, but make sure that there is still something coming out of that death. When you're getting 20 deaths and most of them are just isolated kills and then it's turning into a two-piece, you get a result like that, right? So I think getting a little out of hand, losing some composure, a lot of that really, I think, stemming from that map number two that, once again, was a heartbreaker. In. Yeah, I mean, even the map number one was very winnable for the Eagles. OCU, but, man, I, I felt like that there were so many different situations that were winnable barring that map number three. That map number three was just a blistering <laughs> feeling in the back of Oklahoma Christian. That is really tough. That is indeed tough. Hey, but they got that extra life. They got the one up because they were they in fact on the winner's bracket side. So now they have to go down to the lower finals and they have to face Fisher. It went map five last night. You got to hit the quick regain here if you're Oklahoma Christian because the potential for you to get the run back, not once. This was the second time that you've already faced Northwood on this fine weekend of CCL finals. You could also potentially do it a third time. Absolutely. And well, Fisher looking really good today so far haven't dropped a map as you say those guys it feels like have just been on one they're looking for revenge and well they might very well get it in that lower final but first we'll take a look at this interview i hold shift standing by with Zach. Thank you, friends. I'm here with Dak after the uh, very convincing win. I think we could say that much. First question, it's the easy question. Uh, did you have fun last map? I had a great time last map, to say the least. <laughs> Having your way, dude, 25 and 9. I mean, it just looks like you guys are really clicking on all cylinders right now. We were saying at the beginning of the weekend, the team that's probably going to be the best at search probably wins this event. Take me through that map number two, LSC, though, because you guys were down bad pretty big, made a little comeback. They came back on you. But you guys still iced up. What's going through your head? So at the start of the map, we weren't sure it was kind of like a feeling out process, how they play search, because some teams play slow, some teams play fast, some it, like it's different depending on the team. And then once we realized that they were just kind of hitting lanes all the time over and over, we slowed down the game. We made it so they had to chow us and it just made everything 100 times easier. Well, it felt like the whole series kind of went on cruise control at a certain moment in time. Didn't mean to make the pun, but I'm going to run with it. You played up against your former teammate, Cruz. I asked him yesterday about you. I'm going to have to ask the same question. You about him. What's it like playing up against the guy you're going to be squaring up on the same team with when it comes to Challengers Finals? I mean, that guy's my son. Uh, <laughs> I, I love taking any opportunity to play him. Like, it, it's fun playing teammates, especially because there's that little rivalry there. I, every time he kills me, I hear him screaming at me across the setup. So I get fired up when I get to play him for sure. Well, you guys definitely brought it there in the map number three. You've secured grand finals, not just the best of seven this time. It's two best of five, potentially. So you guys have a huge advantage coming out of the upper bracket. Where's your headspace at, whether you play Fisher or if you play this Oklahoma Christian team again for the grands? I mean, honestly, I don't I, I don't care the team, but I love that it's two best of fives and I just have to we have to come out hot, make sure we don't let our foot off the gas and just take it home. All right. Well, you guys are in a good spot. I'll let you get to it. Prep it up. Thanks for taking the time. Boys, back to you guys. Sweet, dude. Sweet. Thank you, I hold shift. And yeah, how about that, right? He's, once again, you know, you already said it. Like, that man's my son. I mean, we saw it at the end. Like, Cruz, you need me. So, obviously having a lot of fun with it. But uh, Dak certainly in his bag. It's all friendly rivalries at the end of the day. Again, I mean, I wouldn't want to be pissing off my teammate that I'm going to be playing a Challengers <laughs> Finals with in Vegas next weekend. Right. So, but nonetheless, again, a friendly banter is still a rivalry nonetheless. Yeah. And I think that Northwood were able to prove the, uh, the points. And as you even heard through Dak as well, uh, I mean, just understanding, adapting in the search to destroy against the play uh, for Oklahoma Christian as well. They were just reading them like a book, understanding the task at hand. And then they got to the control and, and just quite literally ran them over. Well, certainly the case, as we'll see them guaranteed top two, but uh, looking like the favorite as we kind of framed up heading into the tournament. Those guys just look unbeatable right now, but we'll see if maybe something can happen down there in that lower bracket, if that can try to create some momentum. But before we do, we have to, again, of course, say a really big thank you to NellNetBank.com. These guys have been 
you know, a huge sponsor, a huge part of CCL, and making sure that we've been able to put on this tournament. If you're looking for some more information, make sure you head over to nellnetbank.com. You can find out some more information, and they have a lot of ways to be able to get college support if you're looking for some more options. For now, we will step away. We will get ready for that lower final. Oklahoma Christian is going to need a big regain, and they're going to need it quickly because they go up against a hot fisher that has not dropped a single map on the day. That will be coming up very soon. Make sure you don't go too far.